I spent the other day in Ann Arbor at a regional town hall meeting discussing the newest report from the U.S. Global Change Research Program. Scanning the room, the face that jumped out at me was that of Dr. Jeff Masters of Weather Underground. Since winter storm Nemo hit the East Coast, we've had the predictable responses from climate deniers who seem to think a snowstorm is somehow inconsistent with climate change. I asked Dr. Masters to clear the air. It's winter again, and you get snowstorms in winter. And the fact that the climate's warmed about a degree or so over the last century doesn't mean we're going to stop seeing snowstorms. It's going to mean we'll stop seeing so many record cold temperatures, but snowstorms are still going to occur. In order to get snow, you need two things. You need one, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and two, cold enough temperatures to have snow. And there is some evidence that the U.S. climate is a little bit colder than optimal to get heavy snowstorms because your heaviest snowstorms occur right around freezing. That's when you can have the most moisture in the atmosphere to generate snow. So if you've got those temperatures right around freezing, a good supply of moisture from maybe record warm waters in the Atlantic, you can get record sorts of snows like we saw during this big winter storm Nemo that hit the east coast in February. So this isn't a contradiction at all with global warming sorts of theory. We expect to see heavy snowstorms going forward in the future, and it's possible, although the research isn't clear on this, that you could get even more heavy snows if you've got stronger storms with more lift able to take this moisture, lift it up high where it can cool and snow down to the surface. So uh, I wouldn't expect snowstorms to quit in the future, even uh, 50 years from now. We'll still get heavy snowfalls, they'll just be more limited during the time of year they can fall. Winter will start later, it will end earlier, but you'll still get heavy snowstorms. We saw again this past week uh, two large storms run into each other, uh, one nor'easter and one mass coming out of the Midwest that looked pretty similar to what we saw back in October with uh, hmm. Superstorm Sandy. Uh, is this a pattern or, or just coincidence? I think the two storms coming together to form one larger storm was a coincidence. I mean, we see this fairly commonly with nor'easters. They tend to derive their energy from two separate storm systems, and not at all unusual to see that. What was unusual is the fact that we had record sorts of storm surge values along the East Coast in storms just four months apart. In Boston, we had the second highest storm surge on record in October with Superstorm Sandy. And now with this winter storm in February, we had the fourth highest water level. So now in just a span of four months, you had your two of your top five storm surges on record in Boston. Uh, that's a little bit concerning. Now with climate change, we expect snowstorms to continue, but it just won't be as cold as long or as often. And we saw that with the recent winter storm in February. I mean, we had 30 inches, sometimes 40 inches of snow in some locations, but two days later, it was raining and in the mid 40s. So you're not seeing the sorts of situations where you have extended cold blasts or record sets of cold, but you do tend to see record sorts of precipitation. And this is something you would expect to see in a warmer world, very wet sorts of storms regardless of the season. So two feet of snow followed by rain and warm temperatures equals flooding. Yeah, it's a concern when you have these sorts of very heavy snows, two or three feet of snow followed by a, a big warm spell and a warm up with rain, you're gonna to tend to have increased flooding and that is a big concern going forward in the future climate. We're gonna see more flooding in the winter because we're gonna have heavier precipitation events and you're gonna see snows followed by rain more often.